Mike Leeson here reminding you that for more information on specific ESPN Classic programming and specials, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword, Classic. Time now for some classic trivia. In 1987, Walt Hazard became the third man to play for and coach UCLA in the NCAA tournament. Who are the first two? We'll have the answer later in the game. Stay with us here on ESPN Classic. Dean Smith is a coaching legend. Sometime this year, he'll get career win 600. His number one team, paced by senior guard Kenny Smith, the wheelman for a squad that also has some outstanding freshmen who must prove themselves the way Kenny Smith has. Walt Hazard played on UCLA champions, and now he coaches a program that feels it's on the way back. Super gunner Reggie Miller could well lead the nation in scoring with a cozy three-point line. If the Bruins are on the road back, tonight is the night to show America as UCLA meets number one North Carolina live on ESPN. Tonight, live from Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles, the North Carolina Tar Heels visit the Bruins of UCLA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pauley Pavilion for tonight's intersectional basketball game featuring the University of North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins. Introducing the starting lineup for the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. At forward, a 6'10 senior from Kohler, Wisconsin, number 24, Joe Wolf. At forward, a 6'10 senior from Ashley, Pennsylvania, number 35, Dave Potson. At center, a 6'10 freshman from Hacienda Heights, California, number 42, Scott Williams. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, number 14, Jeff Lebo. At guard, a 6'3 senior from Queens, New York, number 30, Kenny Smith. And the head coach of the Tar Heels, Dean Smith. Seven senior from Riverside, California, number 31, Reggie Miller. And forward, a 6 junior from Boulder, Colorado, number 52, Craig Jackson. At center, a 6 senior from Seal Beach, California, number 15, Jack Haley. Guard, a 6'1 senior from Venice, California, number 12, Montel Hatcher. And guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 24, Pooh Richardson. And the head coach of the Bronze, Walt Hazard. UCLA and North Carolina set to go from Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles. And Dick, it's an exciting aura because the students are back for UCLA basketball. What's really exciting here is that we have two surf and turf basketball teams. So many teams early in the season play against a bunch of cupcake cities, Mike. Yeah. And this is real big basketball tradition. Dean Smith and Michelangelo coaches on one sideline. And on the other, Walter Hazard. And what I think a very crucial year for Hazard and coaching. Scott Williams got his hand on the tip. He's the freshman out of Hacienda Heights, California. But UCLA will control. And a man defense. What a matchup. Pooh Richardson and Kenny Smith, two of the best in the nation. This is Haley trying to go inside against Joe Wolf. And now call Joe Wolf for a personal foul. Big question I see right here, Mike. Does North Carolina have anyone quick enough to check Reggie Miller in a man-to-man -man defense? Right now, one of the negatives of North Carolina, they don't possess that real super quick number three man, a la, let's say, a guy like Mike Luke Jordan, who's all world. He bounced to Haley, and it's rejected by Popson. Hey, Popson with an aggressive defensive play. Jumper out of the corner by Richardson, and here comes Carolina with its first offensive possession. This is Kenny Smith to Williams, the freshman. Dean Smith has started three different lineups. 
in three ball games. They won their first two in Hawaii. Wolf may have been partially blocked, but it goes through, and 2 nothing Carolina. What a very versatile performer. He's very flexible. He gives him a multi-dimensional guy, but he can play anywhere on the front court. Richardson off in the corner. He's high to two. Mike, he's a streaky shooter. He's capable of shooting in a game or out of a game. He's an outstanding ball handler. But if he gets it going, he can shoot. Look at Dean. Another day at the office. Just another game. <laughs> That's right. He's only won 581 games and lost 171. Thompson. Kenny Smith may be more of a scoring factor this year. And Thompson will get his first two. Reggie Miller, not really a tough defender. They're attacking him right now, making him play defense, and they go right to Hobson, who gets to do something low box. Dick, I know you don't like that three-point play, but Reggie Miller's got to love it. He loves it. I don't. Let's get that Mickey Mouse shot and push it back an extra foot. Here's Lebo going after the steal. Williams comes up with a good hustle and exactly what you would expect from North Carolina. Smith got hung up in the air off the Williams. He'll take it. Reggie Miller with the board. He's got to be charged up. Williams playing here in California. What a pass. Shot blocked with the follow by Craig Jackson. Tremendous pass by Poole Richardson. Jackson with a good offensive rebound. Wolf has it. Still likes Jackson. He thinks he can still going to be a great player. Kenny Smith, three-pointer. Won't go. And Kenny Smith has had a terrible time with three-point shots. He is now three out of 18 this year. Richardson. Watch right now, defensively he reaches in, a little spin move by Richardson, he reaches around, as soon as you reach Garibaldi right on a call. Remember Bob Garibaldi, he pitched for the, yes, the San Francisco San Giants. Francisco. Look at Walt Hazard trying to rebuild this program. He won an NIT championship two years ago, beat Indiana in the final. Last year was 15 and 14. It's been a soap opera here. It's been like a dynasty soap opera. The characters have been a little different than Linda Evans. They've been Larry Brown and Gene Barto and a host of others. And Hazard's trying to bring them some stability. But you know what? The aura of John Wooden still hangs in this building. And I don't know the delivery. Greatest achievement in all the sports is record winning 10 national championships. Any sport, any time, I guess. Richardson guarded by Smith. Curtis Hunter is in there right now, and he's got Miller. They go to Miller for the alley. Curtis Hunter, the quickest defensive player to Carolina has, got burned. Mike, he's staring at the ball. If you ever play defense away from the ball, you must have vision of the ball in your man. It is 6-4 UCLA. Wolf to Lebo, an excellent outside shooter. Miller with a rebound. Reggie Miller is a much better rebounder than what I thought. If you look at his body, you don't see that physical toughness, but he's a very aggressive rebounder, and he's quick to the basketball. Now watch him right now. See, Hunter's staring at the ball. That's a no-no. Now he gets behind him. He cuts behind the defender. Good hands. Excellent pass by Richardson. Good play by Miller. Miller got 29 points in UCLA's opening game winner with Santa Clara. They played very poorly against Santa Clara. This guy can handle the ball. He's a magician. Bad pass at the end of it, though, and Hatcher, an off-balance jumper, won't go. Rebound in North Carolina. The foul will go against UCLA. Boy, did you see him leave Kenny Smith? He's Williams forced it up and got it. 
And Williams, who has averaged seven and a half points through two games, has a bucket there. He's a good shooter. He's a guy from out on the coast here who got away from more hazard in UCLA. And if they want to build that tradition, they have to keep guys like Scott Williams at home. It's 8-6, a two-point lead. Carolina trying to trap out of that defense. Miller was outside that three-point line. Wheels into the lane and missed his shot. That's Jackson. Jackson, very aggressive to the boards. A complimentary player. Had 11 rebounds in their first game against Santa Clara. Four points this time. Here's Lebo with a long-range jump shot. That's a two-point. He's a pretty shooter. Squares the body. Reminded me of Jeff Moe of, of Iowa last night, who had a big night in the championship in a great Alaska shootout. And that time it was Richardson against Smith, and Richardson went down. Watch Richardson down on the ball on the 24. They go to the trap, and Hatcher is wide open. Three-pointer, if it goes. Montel Hatcher buried it. He's a streaky shooter. Williams the other way, and he's got it blocked by Hatcher. Holy cow. We on two. And Hatcher couldn't save it. Boy, if he gets that, and they make the bucket on that break, this place lights up. Like they're playing with a lot of confidence. That's not the club that came to Chapel Hill last year that was blown away by better than 30 points. There's a timeout on the court here at Pauley Pavilion. UCLA leading North Carolina 13-8. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986, featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson, right here on ESPN Classic. 15 minutes and 10 seconds to go. First half, UCLA 13, North Carolina 8. Dick, I think the point you made about UCLA playing with a lot of confidence, that's the difference in last year's game. Yeah, they didn't have any kind of inside game. They have a tremendous perimeter game, and I still think that'll be their Achilles heel. They lack a good power game. That's J.R. Reed in the ball game for the first time. Half oh, what a great head fake. But the point is he utilized that pump fake and head fake. I believe he's going to score big points in this game before it's over. He is 6'9", 244. First two games in Hawaii, he averaged 14 points in really limited playing time. And he can play. Ranzino Smith also into the North Carolina lineup. He is number 33. Kenny Smith is really being challenged by Pooh Richardson. There are many point guards. I'll challenge him as much as he will. Hatcher is off to a great start. Gets the roll on that. Montel Hatcher has nine points. He says, forget about Reggie Miller and a Kenny Smith show. This is going to be the Montel Hatcher show. Biggest lead of the ball game, 15 to 8. Oh, they're mugging J.R. Reed inside. they got to get a foul and blow the whistle. And they'll call it this time. And the foul. There's Foster coming into the ball game. Foster Wilson is already in there, and Haley will go out. Foul is going to be on Wilson. Now, here are two heralded freshmen for UCLA. Wilson is 6'8", Foster 6'10 and a half. What do you think about them? They need big things out of them. Wilson is an outstanding athlete. He's got a tremendous body. He's really got good ability in handling the basketball. Hazard thinks he's going to be a great player. Ranzino Smith, who shot well in Hawaii, did not shoot particularly well last year. This is Reed. Boy, he knows what to do with it, doesn't he? Uh, he, he gets great position. He knows how to... He knows how to post up inside. So many big players do not know how to post inside. Watch the big guy right now. He seals off the defense. He gets his butt right in here. Gets him on his hip, spins at whirls, delivers the deuce. And there's so many critics out there, Mike, who have told me they think this kid is totally overrated. They absolutely got to be a never-never land. This kid is the real thing. I tell you what, Dean Smith, everybody in North Carolina, I think anybody that ever saw him play in high school didn't think he's a real thing. Here's the pressure. They beat it to Miller. Three-pointer. Way short on that one. And JR, whose range is usually indoors, misfired there. Oh, got a little layup here. Uh-oh, yeah. Hello there. Foster. Foster with a big deuce. The freshman with a little dipsy dude, Dunker Roo. His first two points, he had two against Santa Clara. It's 17-11, UCLA. It's very physical in the post area, Mike. The official is going to have to start calling it and clean up that post play. Joe Wolf, he's an excellent shooter. He's a good-looking player. I'll tell you, he doesn't have the spectacular ability. He's not going to fly above the rim. He's not going right. to run up and down the court, but he's going to flat out get the job done. It gets you 12, 14 points and about eight rebounds a night. I think that's what they're looking for this year. Here's Hatcher, who's been on fire early to Foster. Walt Hazard going quickly to his big men up front, Wilson and Foster, and 
the ball will go out to UCLA. It's very difficult to win big time, Mike, and win consistency unless you get balance between your interior game and your perimeter game. Right now, UCLA has been extremely nothing more than a perimeter shooting team as we look at Jeff Lebo coming back. And Kenny Smith will get a breather. Joe Wolf will go out for North Carolina. In for the first time is Dave Immel for Walt Hazard. He's a red shirt. They expect some good things out of Immel. He's a kid that can shoot the ball. He doesn't have great quickness. He handles it fairly well also. He's one of their top reserves two years ago. Oh, back to nice the pass and a great feed to Immel. Staring at the basketball, and that's a no-no defensively. It's 19-13. This looks like days of old the way UCLA's playing tonight. Ranzino forces up the jump shot, won't go. Foul. We've got a foul. It's and Curtis Hunter went down hard. I'll tell you, it's physical inside. We have two of the real, what I call, big-time programs in college basketball hooking up. You watch and you look at their uniforms and their shirts. We take a look right here. There's the backdoor cut. Look at a nice pass by Wilson. And there's the finish play by Mr. Miller. He had 29 in the opener. Hit 9 out of 16. Three-point range was 3 of 7. He's capable of having a 45, 50-point night. Sure this is. year is over. I guarantee you that. Here's Hunter. When they recruited him, people at North Carolina thought he was the guy who was going to be a legitimate all -American. And you have to feel sorry for Curtis Hunter because he's just been beaten up his entire career. He really has been uh, just totally uh, injured throughout his career. In fact, when they recruited him out of Durham, North Carolina, everybody thought, here's Michael. Another Michael Jordan. Played just like him. There's no kind of moves. There's only one Michael Jordan in the last year. Way short on the free throw, still almost got the roll. And look at this, J.R. Reed. J.R. Reed, put it in your book, Mike. He'll end up with 20 before this night's over. He is so tough on the inside. He's got five already, and it's a four-point ball game in 1915. What a class kid on top of it. Oh, trying to beat that pressure. This is Jackson back in there. Man-to-man -man defense, North Carolina, known for changing defenses. They're playing man-to-man. -man. Foster's in the pivot. Reed is on him. Double team, Foster got through it, forced it up. Oh, he tried to force it up again. He got it the third time, and Dean Smith was up looking for that walk for three seconds. Should have been a walking violation or a double dribble, but he, you got to give him credit with the hustle. More pushing and shoving underneath, and the foul will go against UCLA. North Carolina gets more out of their secondary phase of their fast break than any team in transition. They really reverse the ball, and you'll see a lot of jump shots, Mike, out of their fast break at the top of the circle. Foul against J.R. Reed for pushing off. That's his first. Six-point lead for UCLA, and the Bruins have the basketball. Jackson, great pass. Most of see Miller shooting the jump shot, and he's scoring inside with a lot of slam dunks because people are staring at the basketball. You must see both. I can't emphasize that enough. Neither can Dean Smith, and always does. Here is Thompson scoring. I'm sure Dean Smith not happy about the defense that's being played right Very now. poor defense on the baseline. Not really playing the kind of defense that North Carolina traditionally has played. Of course, they are missing a guy by the name of Doherty inside, too, who was their enforcer, along with Warren Martin. Oh, that's a walk. I thought he walked again. He watched the walking violation. I thought he lifted his pivot foot. No call by the three officials. Foster hit it. He has six in the lead. The biggest we've had tonight at 25-17. Mike, if you lift that pivot foot prior to putting the ball down, that's a walk. Joe Wolf tried to bank it up. And UCLA is controlling the boards. And Dick, they were terrible on the boards against Santa Clara. Reggie Miller, you know, we're learning. The intensity level's at another level right now. Adrenaline is a great rebounder, isn't it? Jackson with a reverse! Oh, wow! It's a 10-point lead! Greg Jackson with a little reverse layup. Up and under move, not known to be a scorer. We've got a whistle and a foul. Well, Walt Hazard really has him fired up. He was such a scrapper when he played. If his kids play with the kind of intensity that he played, yeah. that 
gave him a 10-year career in the NBA, played in 1964 on Coach Wooden's first national championship, hooked up with a fear guard by the name of Gail Goodrich and a great athlete by the name of Keith Erickson. Timeout with 10 minutes and 33 seconds to go from Pauley Pavilion. The joint is jumping as UCLA is leading number one North Carolina, 27-17. Earlier in the program, we posed this classic trivia question to you. Who are the first two men to play for and coach UCLA in the NCAA tournament? The answer, Gary Cunningham and Larry Farmer. Cunningham helped the Bruins reach the Final Four in 1962 and was the head coach in 1978 and 79. Farmer played on UCLA's 1972 and 1973 championship teams and guided the Bruins to the tournament appearance in 1983. Walt Hazard would add his name to that list in 1987. Now let's return to North Carolina and UCLA from 1986 here on ESPN Classic. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, back to UCLA. I know you want to talk about <laughs> oh, these two great programs. If he isn't on your all-UCLA all team, and if James Worthy isn't on your all-North Carolina team, we're going to have an investigation. Mike, I'll tell you what, a lot of guys would say if you're not a politician, they put Bill Walton at the center slot. I say no. I go with Kareem. Kareem would be my center. My forward would be Sidney Wicks, who's on the bench right now as an assistant coach. Marcus Johnson in the backcourt of Gail Goodridge, and also in the backcourt, a guy by the name of Sir Walter, Walter Hazard. And that leaves out a lot of great, great players. Oh, it sure does. Some brilliant players in this program. We apologize for some of our network audio difficulties that we're having tonight. Hope you'll bear with us, and we're working very hard to correct them as soon as possible. Until then, keep your eyes glued on the screen. If you have so far, you've seen UCLA come out and play with a great deal of emotion and a great deal of passing skill and leading 27-17 in the first half. I'm just excited looking at those two uniforms and seeing all those banners high and hanging here in the pavilion. Tell you what, if you love college basketball, you have to come here at least once and just look up at all the championship banners that John Wooden put in this place. They gotta get more ball movement, which is typical of North Carolina. Ball movement and player movement. They're a little too stationary right now. Lebo with a yeah, double Lebo. clutch and got it. Jeff Lebo, a good shooter, came out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Had a play in a, well, in a reserve role last year because of the presence of Hale and Smith in the backcourt. Great passing again for UCLA underneath. This time they can't convert, and pops him with a rebound. Dean Smith with his original starting lineup back in there, except for Reed in the middle. Kenny Smith misses the jumper. Does not have a shooting eye yet. He's shooting off balance. He's not squaring his body on his shot, Mike. Jackson tried a prayer against Reed and misses. He's a big, strong, tough kid on the inside. Not a great jumper, and J.R. Reed's certainly not a great shot blocker, but he'll score down in the boxes. Lebo tries to go baseline. Offensive foul, Jeff Lebo. He's trying to create the shot off the dribble, Mike, as opposed to getting the shot in the North Carolina ball movement. Right here, now watch, just a head fake. Now he wants to create defensive player. Himmel beats him to the spot. Himmel, good defensive play. Did a nice job, and it's 27-19. UCLA gets the ball back. I want to keep emphasizing, and I did it earlier this week, defensively, to be in a legal position, you must initially have both feet planted on the ground and must face the offensive player as we look at, I think, certainly one of the great, great coaches in the history of college basketball. While we're looking at him, all North Carolina team. You did oh, UCLA. Well, James Worthy would certainly be on it. I got to go with uh, a cross front. Mitch Kupchak would be my center. James Worthy would be a one of the forwards. Sam Perkins, backcourt, Michael Jordan, and Phil Ford. And that leaves off a lot of guys. And Billy C., don't get mad at me, Billy Cunningham. I didn't put him on because he was not recruited by Dean Smith, but by Frank McGuire. How about Walter Davis? Walter Davis. Charlie Scott. Bob McAdoo. <laughs> it's tough to pick five out of that group, especially the way you do it, because you won't just take the best five. You go by the Oh, what a move. Hey, where is this Wilson, 6'8". Absolutely. Absolutely tremendous athletic move to the goal. Trevor Wilson. He's out of Reseda, California, and has his club up by 10. Lebo around the screen, won't go. Wilson kept it alive, and Carolina kicks it back out. Three-pointer, no. Wolf rebound. Wolf working hard in there, now he's limping. Kenny Smith is drifting on his shot. He's not squaring his body and getting that good balanced jump shot. UCLA playing some very intense defense. Oh, they want this game. This is a revenge game. We saw all the quotes today in the Los Angeles paper. Oh. Joe Wolf got away with one. He came across the lane, and he gave...
gave Haley a shot in the ribs with a forearm, and they call it on Haley. Haley plays on the inside. Defensively, he takes a lot of space. Now watch this right now. Here he comes across. Well, Haley sort of beats him with the elbow there, Mike. I think, I think, I think not a bad call. Not a bad. Yeah, you're call. right. On the replay, I'll go along with it. I'm not going to put a striped shirt on you. I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, I don't want one. I don't either. You got to be wacky to want to be a referee, don't you? Totally wacky to make the kind of money they make and take the abuse from Stand coaches. Stand out there and be a target. Bad pass. Carolina really looks rattled in their half-court offensive game. Their execution is nowhere near the kind of execution that is typical of North Carolina basketball. It is only the third turno turnover, however, in the uh, first 11 minutes and 35 seconds of the ballgame. Immel and Richardson, the backcourt for Wall Hazard. This is Wilson. Boy, he's quick inside, had it blocked. And here's a blocking foul on Bucknell. I think it's a matter of time before he starts at one of the forward positions. I think Wall Hazard's trying to be yeah. very generous to his upper class. Because look at his quickness to the goal. That's an athlete. Great body, comes over, slices and slashes, splits the defenders to draw that foul. Most guys would have taken that ball right through the defender and then called for a charge. That's one of the best first steps I think I've ever seen for a big man. The kid's 6'8", around 215, and he just explodes. Great first step. He had 27 points and 20 rebounds last year against Crenshaw High School, one of the great high school basketball programs that's produced Marcus Johnson, a guy by the name of John Williams at LSU, and also Stevie Thompson, now going to be a star for Syracuse. Missed the second free throw, but Immel gets the rebound. And right now, everything is going to go UCLA's way. Wilson keeping it alive, but he'll be charged for the foul underneath. You don't think he wants to play? He's not playing like a freshman. He's looking over at Coach Hazard like saying, hey, Coach, I want PT, and I'm going to stay on the floor. Mr. Jackson's going to become an assistant coach and sit next to you, Coach. Well, they're going to have to get him out, Dick, because that was his third personal foul. But you you can be aggressive, but when you get that aggressive, you're going to pick him up. You're going to pick up fouls, but you'd rather have your players aggressive and not play intimidated and play tentative as he's got three as we see him sitting there. 30 to 19, UCLA leading heavily favored North Carolina by 11. There's you know, Reed coming back. Here comes J.R. Reed on the floor. I don't know about heavily favored. You know, in the polls, North Carolina number one. But today in basketball, Mike, I saw it up in a great Alaska shootout. Yeah. So much parity. It's so unpredictable. Playing away from home, traveling from Hawaii. I'm going to start making all the excuses for North Carolina. <laughs> hey, what can you say about Louisville? How about an excuse for them? No backcourt right now, but I think it's more than just the backcourt. I didn't see the intensity. I thought they thought just putting the shirt Louisville on the floor, they'd beat those people up in Alaska. And I know Denny Crum has to be really disappointed with their effort. He got that shirt walked on three times. JR comes back in the ballgame, and Popson will go out after hitting the free throw. Here comes full court pressure. You know, we were talking about the revenge factor last year. What has it accused in the papers? Dean Smith of running up the score and pouring it on, and Dean just absolutely played everybody, and they just played yeah, brilliant he basketball. Didn't, he didn't run it up. But he's used that with his players, and they are fired up here today. I think it's one thing that a coach uh, doesn't believe something, but he uses it to get his team fired up. That's fine. This is Immel guarded by Lebo. It's a nine-point ball game. Immel three-pointer. Oh, yeah. Hey, and they are doing this without the outside shooting of Reggie Miller. We haven't, saw, we haven't seen a jump shot yet from Miller. We've seen Miller take the ball to the basket. Immel gives him another solid guard, something they didn't have last year. Reed wants the shot. Forced it. Won't go. Wolf for the rebound. Lebo got it. And Lebo draws a foul underneath. I really think if J.R. Reed plays 30 minutes a night, he'll get 20 every night. He's almost unstoppable the way he posts inside with his body. He really knows how to post up for the ball. And beside that, Mike, he has excellent hands. So many kids can't catch the ball in the post area. Greg Foster is back in for UCLA. Wall Foster has, with four, or Lebo rather, goes to line four points. Has not taken a free throw. He's got great form. Every youngster out there. Watch Clinic 101 on how to shoot a free throw by Jeff Lebo. Just perfect form. It's amazing. Dean Smith very rarely says anything nice about freshmen, but he said about Lebo when he came in, he was the most fundamentally sound freshman he'd ever been around, and that's great praise from Dean Smith. He played for an outstanding coach, his dad. His dad coached him in high school and really supposedly a very, very solid coach. Hits the free throw, and it cuts the lead to 10. Timeout with 7.26 to go, first half.
You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986, featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson, right here on ESPN Classic. 3.47 to go, 12-point ball game, 39-27. to 27. You've, uh, you've been a subject of controversy out here in the Pac-10 because uh, they, they've been criticizing you as saying you've been too hard on them. I don't think you have, Dick. I think the Pac-10 has been down, and I think it's going to take performances like this with players like Walt Hazard has to bring them back. I really believe that. Rather than just talking about it, do it like Lute Olson's doing it down yeah. at Arizona, and I'll sing their praises. Raveling's going to get it done at University of Southern Cal in two or three years, and if UCLA recruits kids like the Sean Higgins, as we watch the penetrate, he walked with that ball. Yeah. You know, they will get it back, but rather than just talking about it, you're right, Mike. A performance like today, I'll be the first guy. I just try to be honest, and it's been nothing but mediocrity in the Pac-10. And, of course, you bring the fans back by winning. Everybody likes to be with a winner. And UCLA's greatness in the past does not fill the stands now. Carolina's got to get Kenny Smith the basket to get his confidence. He has not scored yet in the game. The All-American point guard, Pooh Richardson, plays him tough as well. Now they have Hatcher playing him. Smith going for the first one, did not get the basket, but he'll draw the foul on Richardson. He's got great quickness. He's one of the few people on the floor right now for North Carolina that has tremendous athletic speed and quickness. Reed comes back in, and Scott Williams, the freshman from California, will go out. That's Williams in the starting lineup tonight because Dean Smith likes to start players when they come back to their home area. You know, Mike, I really believe that one of the great ingredients for success now in college basketball really is quickness and speed. You have to have those athletes that can run and trap. And right now, North Carolina does not possess that kind of personnel. No, they've got it in the backcourt, but up front, they're, they're really hurting. Curtis Hunter is one of the few people they can bring in off the bench that's got that kind of speed. They the thought, last foul, by the way, was on Montel Hatcher, not Richardson. They thought Kevin Madden would be the answer, but yeah. academically, he's now ineligible for this year, according to uh, North Carolina standards, certainly not uh, NCA standards. Well, I told him they'd just like him to sit out and concentrate on his studies. Nothing wrong with that. No, sir. The way it ought to be at a lot of places. Oh, at your back door. door. Again. Blocked. Hobson over the top. Hobson's playing much better than I saw him play in the past. Good execution right there with the 45-degree angle. David Hobson is aggressive. He's quick. Has a lot of potential. And it's just been a kid who's been struggling to gain his confidence throughout his career. Lebo with 10 points. And it's 39-31. UCLA's lead cut to eight. Richardson flying down the lane out of control and had to dump it off. A lot of point guards that have his kind of quickness will play out of control. There's Bad a steal. Pass Good and defense. Kenny Smith almost runs over the count ball it. boy. Got to count that. Oh, the ball boy was out there wiping up some perspiration, and Kenny Smith almost ran right over top of him. What a burst of speed. Watch the denial defensively. He steps in a passing lane. Excellent denial. And now it's a race to the goal. And, I mean, he has got great quick. You know, this should be a two-shot attempt. Oh, sure this should be should. a basket and a two-shot yep. attempt. Intentional foul on Montel Hatcher. Good call by the official. If the ball did not go in, Mike, the rule would be two shots and possession of the basketball. And it will be a two-shot foul. They could cut the lead. It's now 39-33, a six-point margin. They could cut it down to four if Kenny Smith can hit these free throws. And it's happened with defense. The last two baskets have been defensive yeah. efforts by North Carolina. The three officials, Mike, I want to point this out, are from the Pac-10. We have Tommy Harrington on the game with Jimmy Clark and Bob Garibaldi, as opposed to bringing in three ACC officials here. They seem to be getting away from that in terms of reversing. Sometimes people would rather see three neutral officials bring in three Big Ten guys on a game like this. I would. I would too. It's just not that the guys are going to cheat. It just eliminates people from flat out even sure. thinking about that. People don't even get to talk about it. Kevin Walker will come back into the ball game for Walt Hazard. And all at once we've got a four point ball game after UCLA was running away with it. And Kenny Smith seemed to get loose all of a sudden and get on the scoreboard. It's another steal. They're rattled against the press. Basket counts and a blocking foul on Immel. They are rattled against the press. Right now, UCLA is demonstrating what North Carolina State did to blow a 14-point lead in the last four minutes against Iowa. There's the anticipation. Nice quick move. He's from California. He loves it. He scores, and now he goes to the line. There's the trap. There's the trap. Now here comes the anticipation, man. He says, thank you. I love that. You'll get an assist for this, Dave Immel. And up he goes to the goal. Scott Williams, he says, yeah, I love it. 
6'10", 2'14", out of Hacienda Heights, California. And he makes the bucket, cuts the lead to two. He'll have a chance on the free throw to cut it to one. And Dick, how do you turn around a 13-point deficit that quick? I think you mentioned it, the one word defense. Defense, playing on the defensive end, trapping, being able to force the team into turnovers and converting them, which is important. You know what's amazing, though? North Carolina has not played well at all here in the nope. first half, and yet to be only down two, UCLA has played as good, I believe, as they're capable of playing. They're playing with so much emotion and intensity. Right now, I would have to say Uncle Mo is on the side of <laughs> Dean Smith. I think you're right. 2.22 to go in the half, 39 to 37. Pleasure to work with you, Mike. I've been watching you in football with ESPN, and you know, even though I think all you guys involved in football are totally wackos being involved <laughs> with that sport, but you do a great job, and it's a pleasure for me to well, work with you for the first time. Thank you, Dick. We're going to be doing a lot of games together. It's going to be a lot of fun because, as you mentioned earlier, college basketball is not going to have one or two teams that are going to dominate it this year. There's so many teams that are going to have to go out and fight, and I think we're going to have every one of them on our schedule. Ten zip and a two-minute spurt by North Carolina. Free throw won't go, and the rebound goes to Greg Foster. How many games have you done already this year? I did six this past weekend alone. So I got another one tomorrow, Indiana and <laughs> Notre Dame. I'm looking forward to that. Foster kicks it outside. This is Miller. Trying to create something and can't. They're doing a good job of denying the ball. Pops it right now defensively. He is really denying the ball to Miller, not letting him get free for his jump shot. This is the other freshman, Kevin Walker. Walker's a very versatile player. He's got great range as a shooter. Shot clock is down to 11 seconds, and we've got a holding foul inside on Thompson. And we got an injury in Jeff Lebo. It looks like he has really turned his ankle. He is hobbling out there. Lebo goes down on that left ankle. And he is going to go over toward the North Carolina bench. North Carolina cannot afford to lose a guard. They really lack depth in the sure backcourt. After Lebel and, and Kenny Smith, you go to Ranzino Smith and Curtis Hunter. And Curtis Hunter, I'm not convinced, He's is a, a legitimate guard. He's really a forward. Yeah. And they're trying to keep Lebo on the court, but they can't do it. He will limp off, and Ranzino Smith will come back on. Oh, you're right. That's the one Achilles heel of North Carolina right now is that backcourt depth. That and also the number three spot. The three spot is a, a place on the floor where you'd like to have real good team quickness. That athlete which really can dominate a game a la Reggie Lewis and a Reggie Williams and a Reggie Miller and a Fennis Dembo from out of Wyoming and a Jeff Gray out of Iowa State. What athletes those guys are. They made my all silky smooth team. Miller eight points, two out of three. Give him nine, he had 29 in the opener, and UCLA gets a little bit of breathing room. He's got a 41-37. He's got a very quiet nine. He's a kind that can be very yeah. explosive any given moment. Crowd trying to get back into it. UCLA really had him into it earlier. North Carolina spurt took him out of it. Nice feed to Pops, and he missed the shot. Miller with a rebound. He missed the shot, but it was really beautiful execution. They're executing the North Carolina passing game to perfection now in the last two or three possessions. Haley is back in there in the middle. He's guarded by Wolf. He's a magician with the ball. Look at this guy handle the ball. From out of Ben Franklin High School in Philadelphia, Sonny Hill, a great friend of Walt Hazard, helped in the recruiting process for Pooh Richardson. Miller is fouled by Popson. That's his second. What can we say about this guy? I promised I would not talk about his NCAA championships and his NIT championships and his gold medal. I told Jimmy Valvano, I will not say all these great things about Dean Smith. He Why says not? That, he said to me yesterday in the plane, I'm just tired of you always talking about Dean and what a great, great coach. I can coach too. But he can. Jimmy Valvano can Yes, he can. can. But he has not yet done what Dean Smith has done. <laughs> we'll, we'll give Jimmy, uh, Jimmy V some time. He's the athletic director now, so he wants a Jimmy Valvano poem. 43-37, <laughs> the margin, six. Tipped away by Walker. Bucknell will come back into the ball game for North Carolina. Sitting on a bench with Wall has it right behind him is Sidney Wicks, an assistant coach, and Andre McCarter, who played in 1975 on the last UCLA National Championship of John Wooden. And he's from Philadelphia as well as Hazard, both from Overbrook High School. Smith really forced that one up, and Kenny Smith finally got his bucket. But he's looking at least offensively now, and they're reversing the ball to him, and his confidence when he goes in at halftime has to be a lot greater than it was in the first 10 minutes and a half. It's the most confident shot he put up. 
Look at Pooh Richardson. He goes between the legs, around the back. See, half-court game right now. They're very stationary offensively, and they have no inside attack at all. They are just strictly a perimeter-oriented basketball team. Just Richardson. like that. I'm surprised we haven't seen Trevor Wilson back in there, even with the three fouls. Carolina runs a very unique fast break. They run the sideline break, Mike, and then get a lot of ball reversal for the high post jump shot. Got a foul inside against North Carolina with 14 seconds left. I don't know about that call. That call was made by Tom Harrington right now of the Pac-10, and I'm, I'm not convinced. Unless you're going to clean it up and have consistency on both sides of the floor and play it on a post, fighting an establishing position, I'm sure he loved the call. Oh, yeah. Joe Wolf picked up his second. Of course, that's what players are looking for. They want to know what they can get away with and what they can't. They're fighting for position inside. They've been jockeying left and right, and now he cleans it up and he calls it on Mr. Wolf, trying to post inside. Free throw by Haley. He did, this is a young kid who did not play in high school. Last year was the first year that he started for UCLA. I think if he had played in junior high school and high school the way most kids do, the young man would be a pretty good player right now. It's only his fourth year of organized basketball. He practiced six hours this summer every day to improve at the level he is. As you said, unfortunately, he doesn't have the strength and the offensive skills inside to be a dominating player, but he's getting maximum out of his potential, and that's all he can do. Yeah, he'll give you everything he's got, won't he? 47 to 39, 14 seconds to go. Right now, they got to look for a three point play. They need a three point play out of one of their shooters. There is Emil on the UCLA bench, and North Carolina has got Kenny Smith in the backcourt along with Ranzino Smith. Ranzino Smith has scored big in the first two games. He's averaging 16 points a game in the first two games. They go to a spread offense. And Ranzino goes inside the line, forces the jumper, got his own rebound, and it won't go. And Haley was in there just swatting at everything that went up. And look at him sprinting out to the locker room. Dean Smith certainly has to be concerned with the effort. This guy, Sir Walter, takes the little trip to the locker room and says, oh, I wonder if the master, the Wizard of Westwood, is happy now with my performance. I tell you what, we saw a, a UCLA team that did everything absolutely right, Dick, and then North Carolina threw on that trapping defense. Did it look like they they raised the intensity of that defense, or were they doing something differently on this? They went to a different kind of trap, and it rattled UCLA. But then UCLA, I thought the big basket was the forced jump shot by Pooh Richardson, which really was a big, big momentum play for uh, UCLA. We had UCLA up by as many as 13. Right now, the Bruins lead it 47 to 39. We're at halftime in Los Angeles. Stay with us. You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986, featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson, right here on ESPN Classic. We're at one of the shrines of college basketball, Pauley Pavilion in UCLA, where the Bruins trying to bring back some of the memories from long ago. And they're leading number one, North Carolina, 47-39. And this guy helped to make it a shrine. Sir Walter has it as we look at Dean Smith sitting on the sideline. You know, psychologically, you have to worry about your kids if you're Dean Smith, where they can get to a point and you can almost mentally accept the loss on the road after a trip like that trip to Hawaii. And yeah, that's a danger factor, number one. Number two, right now is an essential time for North Carolina in the next three or four minutes to get a little spurt and to get back to respectability of three, four down. There's Popson a on a great pass from Kenny Smith. And Popson has eight. That was a set play. They laid a screen for Popson. Good call by Dean Smith. Perfect execution, and they got it down to six. Important statistic in the first half, bench scoring. UCLA had 17 off the bench. North Carolina only eight. Those all came from J.R. Reed. This is Richardson. Can't get it. Miller kept it alive. Good job by Reggie Miller. They're coming up with all the loose balls. Richardson can't get it again. And the rebound goes to Scott Williams. Scott Williams is an active big player. See, that's the ball reversal I was talking about earlier in their running game. Get it to Richardson. It's a four on two. And then Miller mishandled it. Off of, UC off of North Carolina, rather, out to UCLA. Last year when North Carolina would reverse that ball to the top of the circle, Brad Doherty would be right there sticking that jump yeah. shot. Richardson's had a tough night shooting, only Good one point. out of seven. Come on. 
Here is Miller, and it partially blocked, and Wolf gets the rebound. He's really taking the ball to the basket, Reggie Miller. Even though he came up empty, he really wants to prove he's more than a one-dimensional jump shooter. Here's the loose ball. Uh oh Miller there he goes. It pops in his back, and he fouled him. Dave Popson picks up the personal. That's his third. He comes from such a great athletic family, Reggie Miller. As we watch here with the speed and the quickness, there's Popson now, tries to make the block, but gets him with his body. His brother, Darrell, plays for the California Angels, where they just let Reggie go. And his sister, Cheryl, just gave me a beautiful kiss. So eat your heart out, Mike. She's a gorgeous lady. <laughs> you dog, you. <laughs> we know you got nothing in your legs. There's Hazard. He's trying to bring some stability we talked about earlier to this program. It's been a soap opera, as I alluded to earlier. You had Gene Bartow, Gary Cunningham, Larry yep. Brown, and Larry Farmer. And finally now, he's trying to bring some back that tradition. He's trying to utilize the John Wooden system, but the only difference is the pieces are a little different. I tell you, he wins this one tonight. It's come back a long way. Well, he can utilize that for a great PR coup in terms of recruiting and many other factors. He's already locked up a tremendous player, Sean Higgins, an offensive machine. Reggie Miller with a dozen, but he missed that one. A couple of UCLA students standing behind us. I know what they're majoring in. It's screaming their brains out. Must be one-on-one. -on -one. Lebo kept it alive. This is Wolf. Looks like Lebo's ankle is okay. He's moving. Looks fine. Williams to Wolf, who wants to shoot the ball. Missed the shot. And Reggie Miller flinging those elbows inside. He's an aggressive rebounder. He's more than just a jump shooter. Jackson wanted a ball underneath. Hatcher didn't see him. Popson denying the ball, playing ball. You man defense. Look at that weak side play. Good defensive play by Popson. Popson very quietly doing a lot of good things. Three-pointer. And Kenny Smith, who was very tentative shooting first half, lit that up. He really squared his body perfectly that time. He had great balance to the release of that jump shot. 48-44, Kenny Smith now with 11 points, takes over the scoring lead for North Carolina. Richardson, nice move. Richardson gets the basket, but what an excellent screen. I mean, that screen really got him free for that jump shot. Haley tipped that one out of bounds to prevent the layup. Curtis Hunter will come back in the ballgame. Popson will go out. Williams goes out, and that means uh, J.R. Reed is back in. Kenny Smith had a real tough time trying to get over the top of the screen, and it freed Richardson for the little jump shot. There's the kid both of us like for UCLA, Trevor Wilson. Yeah, he's an athlete. He's got three fouls. Jackson goes out, but he got the last basket. He should get credit for it. He gave his body up yeah. to get him free. Wilson is guarding Wolf right now. They gotta go right down to J.R. Reed. Haley can't handle him in the lane. That's an m, &M that's a mismatch, a no contest. He gets the ball in that traffic. Curtis Hunter, 16 footer, in and out. Haley, nice outlet to Miller. North Carolina's gotta find some quality minutes, some QT out of Curtis Hunter. There he is. That's the bomb squad, here it comes. That's what they came to see, Dick. Down in Tinseltown, they rock and roll when Reggie lets him fly from Reggie no man land. Reggie has 15. And it's 53-44, the lead back to nine. They're doubling up JR, if that's not respect, he's gotta hit that jumper. And he did that time. That's a great play, they're doubling down on JR Reed. Good inside, outside action. Most freshmen would force that shot. He throws it right out to Hunter for the little jump shot. This is Haley. Oh, offensive move. foul on Haley. Offensive foul on Haley. He did throw the left arm out there, but they're not going to call it on him. They're going to call it on J.R. Reed. Oh, that's a poor call. I mean, absolutely a poor call. He cleaned him out. You check this out. Watch number 15's left arm. I mean, he takes him right away with the left arm. Oh, Bob Garibaldi, look at the left arm right here. Watch that left arm. He shoves him right out of the way with the left arm, and they call it Can't on. be quite that obvious, can you? Woo! Let's go, Jack! Haley will go to the free throw line where he's 2 of 2 tonight and this season. 72% shooter a year ago. And Sometimes you get away with one. And Garibaldi's a good official. Let me correct, you know, he's an outstanding official. He's been refereeing for a number of years on the coast and is one of the premier referees in the West Coast. Is he on your all-Italian officials team? 
Maybe that's the only team you don't have. I don't have that. We're going to work on that. <laughs> right. They're having a problem with the shot clock right now. Look at Walter. Walt dappered up. He used to be a cheerleader. He cheered for the football team. You know what he was proud of last year? He took me in his office, and he had Cosby pictures all over. <laughs> he went to see a Bill Cosby taping. He and Cosby are very close. But he told me the proudest I am, my son graduated last year from Stanford. Uh, he ought to be proud of that. Bob Knight's son graduated from Stanford also. Jack Haley, shooting two. Haley at the line. It's a seven-point margin with 16.49 to go in the ballgame. UCLA comes into this game 1-0, North Carolina 2-0. Haley's got a nice touch for a big man. Three points for Haley. Tell you what, they moved the UCLA student section, or they moved the press, so it is now in front of the UCLA student section. I feel like we're sitting at the bottom of a barrel, <laughs> and there's 5,000 people standing on top screaming down in it. The shot clock is off. Of course, that shot clock it hasn't been a factor tonight and may never be between these two. Not the way they throw the ball up with their transition game. Haley misses the second one. Here's a whistle. And we've got a lane violation, so Haley's going to get another crack at it. He gets another shot because he stepped in a lane before he released the oh, ball. Yeah. There it is. Look, they're right in a lane. He hasn't released the ball. That's a good call by the official. Joe Wolf had the tent set up already. You gotta wait until the ball is released by the free throw shooter before you move across. He did it again. And Haley hits it. Will that point make a difference? We'll see. 55-46. Haley has four, all on free throws. They're trying to reverse the ball to Kenny Smith. Runs a backdoor cut. Comes off the screen. They got a double screen for Smith. Joe Wolf. Got a nice touch. That was great execution. They ran a double screen, brought it to the weak side, dumped the ball in a little two-man game, and Wolf delivers the deuce. Here comes Wilson. He's fouled on the drive. JR got his third foul. Number 34, JR Reed. That is going to be number four on JR Reed. Oh, our stats had him for two. Well, he's got two in this half. Yeah, that's Bang, four, right? You're right. And I know North Carolina doesn't like to talk about freshmen and how they need to contribute, but J.R. Reed had better contribute to this basketball team. J.R.'s biggest area of adjustment will be playing defense, especially in the open court. See, he's never had a play out in the open court right here. He's usually planted inside in a defense in high school, and he bumped him on a wing and got caught for his fourth, fourth foul. Third team foul in the second half against Carolina. It's a seven-point lead. This is Richardson, guarded by Kenny Smith. There's the trap. They like the trap as soon as you bring the ball to the wing. Palmer is in the ball game at a guard. Number four is Trevor Wilson, the freshman. Very quick first step. UCLA runs that UCLA high post offense. What a great move for the basket. The basket is overruled, and it's an offensive foul, and the UCLA crowd can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I, I think North Carolina got away with one right here. Watch this drive. This kid, you're going to hear, what a first step. Now look at him slash. He splits the defensive player. He's hanging in the oh, air. No, that's an awful call. That's an awful that's call. That's a poor call, no doubt about it. The defensive player leaned into the offensive player. I think he balanced out that previous call. And that cost him three points, and it gives Trevor Wilson his fourth foul. It cost him Trevor Wilson. They have to put him yep. on the sideline and become a member of the All-Pine team and draw <laughs> some splinters. That's right. Big play there. Hobson, tough shot, and it's an air ball. Richardson comes out with it. What speed. Look at the speed with the ball. Great pass to use. The fundamental bounce Never. pass. Tremendous execution of the transition game by UCLA. 57 48 a nine point lead with 15 35 left off the foot of miller out of bounds carolina's spacing right now in their offensive half court game is not what they normally would like to see 15 feet apart get the good angles for the entry got a timeout of Pauley pavilion our halftime score ucla 57 carolina 48. You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986 featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson right here on ESPN Classic. 15 minutes and 30 seconds to go from Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles where UCLA is leading North Carolina in 
what has been an exciting basketball game. It's been an NCAA atmosphere here. It really has been. Kenny Smith leaned in and got the roll. Pretty play by Kenny Smith, who has 13 points. Good acrobatic move by Kenny Smith. Looked a little, a little bit like Mary Lou Renton there. <laughs> Look at that trap. As soon as they go to the wing, they trap. Now that's the way you want to break it. What great a great bounce pass. I'll tell you what. Credit that to the UCLA coaching staff. Perfect way to break the half-court trap. 2-1-2. Two, two. Get it to the high post. Throw the opposite diagonal pass and get the layup. Great Greg job. Foster had an incredible bounce pass, and now he commits the foul on Joe Wolf at the other end. Notice how all the freshmen commit fouls. Foster, Trevor Wilson, J.R. Reed. It's because they're not used to playing at this pace in terms of a game. Now watch this right here. He reaches in. Little head fake. See, he freezes him with the head fake. You've got to keep your ground. When a guy throws that pump fake, you cannot leave your feet. Wolf, who's averaging 14 points a game, now has seven. That was his first free throw try tonight. Mike, I was really impressed with the last two baskets by UCLA. The transition game where they executed it perfectly, centering the ball, running a 45-degree angles, and I credit that to Hazard and his coaching staff. Also, their execution in attacking the half-court trap, getting a guy up high and then reversing it to the weak side. Here comes the trap. you got to post somebody to the middle of the floor. That's not the pass you want. That's a Miller pass. did a nice job of saving and gets it to Jackson. Dick, I swear, when this game started, there were empty seats. There aren't any in here now. Well, they're late. They were shopping on Rodeo Drive. You know, <laughs> Beverly right. Hills. Got the Rolls Royces rolling out there. Here's the turnover. Ranzino with Jackson behind him. Jackson got a piece of it. What a follow by Popson. Hey, Popson's looking good. He's really playing with so much more aggressiveness than I've seen in the past. This is the best game I have ever seen Dave Popson play. He's playing like a senior right now. 59-54. Jackson. Excuse me, Foster. Good looking shot there. He's got a nice touch for a big guy. I think you're going to see more PT playing time for Wilson and Foster yeah. as the year progresses. Foster has 10 and it's 61 to 54 UCLA. They want to get it to Joe Wolf. They're trying to reverse the ball to Wolf. Kenny Smith rimmed it out. Wolf tipped it in. He said, hey Kenny, you don't want to get me to rock, so I'm just <laughs> going to get your missed shot and tip it. Tip it back up. That's 10 for Wolf, starting to make his presence felt on the offense. Whenever and it's you, a five-point game. Whenever you tip a basketball, you want to use your fingertips. That's what gives you your touch. Foster the back door cut. pass this time. Oh, Miller got ridden out of there. Carolina's rotating over in their defense a lot better. They run the back door cut off the denial to Miller, but look at the defense rotating over. He gets drawn. Yeah, there's the foul on Kenny Smith, but he came over, at least took away the easy layup. Immel will come back into the ball game for Walt Hazard. Richardson will sit down. I said this a crucial year. You know, Walt Hazard was 15 and 14 last year. They won the NIT the year before. This year becomes big. They got to get an NCAA berth if they want to bring back yeah. the kind of excitement here at Pauley Pavilion because the people have not been coming out at all. Trap almost worked again. There's Foster, a little soft. Hey, he's a good-looking frosh. I'll tell you, that big guy's going to get some minutes. Jack Haley's going to have a tough time keeping him next to Walt Hazard. Now, we understand uh, his scoring was wrong before. Now he has 10 points in the double figures. And it's 63 to 56, UCLA. He's very quick also for a big guy. They got to go to Wolf, though. Foster will follow him if they go to Wolf inside. Double pump and a late whistle. They'll call it on Foster. Nice call, Dick. Yeah, he's going to go with every fake right now. They get him inside. Watch Wolf now. He posts up inside. He gets that swim step. He gets the locks him on his back. He says, Foster, you're a freshman. You can't handle me. He throws the little fake, and there's the bump, and he pushes. Well, Foster made the mistake of holding his arms. Instead of being straight out, he put that one arm up in the face, and you go up against it, you're going to commit the foul. I got a kick looking at Wolf. Has it on the sideline. He looks like a professor now. He doesn't look like that little guy that used to handle the ball and run the break for John Wooden. And that was an amazing team. Wooden got national oh, championship was out of center. Wolf now with 12 points. Four out of four from the line for the senior from Kohler, Wisconsin. And it's 63 to 58. Carolina picking up. They're going to look to go to run and jump defense right now. Watch the run and jump trap. They get it to Foster. Hey, Rod Foster. Palmer is in the backcourt, number 21, with Immel, number 30. Foster is a good-looking freshman. See, that's where you want to get the ball, to the high post against the trap. They come after him. He gets it to Palmer, wide open. 
Boy, if you can make those jump shots against the trapping defense, you can win. Well, as soon as they double up on a ball, it's important that the guy that's doubled finds the right guy. And they're finding the right guy. And they get it over to Palmer, and he sticks that J. Where do they find Palmer? Because I don't know too much about him, and I'm going to admit it. He's a sophomore out of Compton who played a little bit last year. Only average 1.2 points a ball game. And now Haley will come back into the ball game. Haley, the starting center, replaces Jackson. They're big right now. When they go with Haley on the floor and Foster, you're looking at a big lineup. Reggie Miller's not a bad rebounder in there either at 6'7". I look for them eventually to play the combo of Clue Richardson and Reggie Miller together in the backcourt. I do too. Popson. Pretty move by David Popson. That's Dean Smith basketball. High percentage shots, get the ball down inside, get it to our people that can score around the boxes. That's the way he has designed his offense for years. Popson has a dozen tonight. He's averaging 14 and a half points a game. Here's Kenny Smith with the steal, and the ball goes out of bounds, and it will be out to UCLA. I feel a run coming by North Carolina, Mike. I don't know why. I just feel I see a little more intensity in Kenny Smith and a little bit more emotion. And I just see a little run possibly coming right now by North Carolina. You know, Dick, I had the same feeling, but the last couple of minutes, North Carolina has put that pressure defense on, on UCLA, and the Bruins have reacted better than they did in the first half. They got to shut down the entry to the high post. They're running a double stack now. They're going to try to free Miller off a double stack. There's Foster. I'll tell you what, that kid has got to play. He's a big time performer. The freshman from Oakland has a dozen and the lead is back to seven. See, Joe Wolf again. This time he couldn't hit it. Emil. Followed by Miller. They're beating him with quickness to the boards. I guess that's enough of that run that I anticipated by North Carolina. Nothing like quickness, Mike. One of the greatest assets to possess in college basketball. Hunter looks inside the wolf. Missed it. This place is live. Here they go. It's a one-on-three break, and Miller should wait for help and does. This Reggie Miller is now seventh all-time scoring on UCLA's list. Who Richardson hasn't scored a lot of points, but he really knows how to run the offense. Tough shot there. Not a good shot at all. Poor shot by Miller. Foul underneath. Oh, on Haley. And Walt Hazard didn't like it one little bit. Look at him. He's stomping down the sideline. He took the glasses off. No longer the look at a professor. He's saying, what kind of call is that? And look at Andre McCarter. Leading in the background, Jack Hirsch. This guy was some fierce competitor. I'll tell you something. You don't want to lock up with him. Al Bianchi, who coached him in a pro, said he's the real battler. Timeout here at UCLA, 11 one to go in a nine-point ball game. Don't go away. the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986, featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson, right here on ESPN Classic. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale with you from Los Angeles. Glad you could join us for college basketball. What a beauty it's been. UCLA leading North Carolina, 69-60 with 11.01 to go. Miller, last game, was able to pass his coach, Walt Hazard, for number eight all-time scoring, and he just passed Sidney Wicks for number seven all-time. That's the assistant coach. He's just a great scorer. He's a prolific scorer, but they're more than just Reggie Miller this year. These freshman kids look like they're really going to help them, and Trevor Wilson and Greg Foster. They've already made big contributions tonight. Kenny Smith, nice fake, double pump. Won't go, and Haley with a big rebound, and they call it for Trevor. And boy, Haley is really hot. Haley has had a foul call against him and a traveling violation on the last two possessions, neither one of which he agreed with very much. He better settle down or I'll take him out for a minute before he gets slapped with a technical, and you don't need that technical to break your momentum. They're playing so well. There was a technical last year in this game that meant a lot. Lebo just inside the three-point line, won't go. They're getting one shot right now, Mike. They're really yeah. neutralizing them on the boards, and it's because of their quickness to the ball. They are much quicker to the basketball than North Carolina. I see they brought J.R. Reed in with four fouls. Eight rebounds from Miller. Haley trying to get into the lane, walked again. I'd get him out right now. Hazard's got to make a substitution. Yeah, he's too he's rattled. He really is. Get your head in the game. He made the call for him. 
Quickly back the other way. They should go right at Healy right now. They should get the ball to Reed. They go into Bucknell, and he missed an easy chip shot. I think he was waiting for somebody to come up and challenge him, and nobody did. This possession's big. If they get doubles, look at that Miller. Oh, oh, what a right hand. hand. What a shot. shot. Tremendous quickness. Throw out that scouting report that says Reggie Miller just can shoot the jump shot. He has 23 points, and the lead is 11. This is Reed. Lost it on the way up. UCLA really dominating defensively, dominating rebounding, and just really taking this game over. And Dean Smith has Joe Wolf up off his bench. He's got to get him back in there. They run that high post offense. They like to run a cutter right off the high post and reverse the ball. Richardson with a tough catch. He's got great hands, really great hands. Emil directing traffic. Carolina needs the big defensive player right now. Shot clock is down to 13. For years, Carolina's always been known to make the big play at the right moment to get momentum on their side and get that big spurt. And the foul is called on Bucknell. As the shot clock got down to five seconds, it was not a good foul. Steve Bucknell trying to check right now. Reggie Miller just doesn't possess the kind of floor speed and quickness. Plus, he doesn't have the experience. He didn't play a whole lot last year and trying to check one of America's great scorers, Reggie Miller. Bucknell is out along with Lebo. Ranzino Smith is back in. And here comes Craig Jackson back into the ballgame for UCLA. And Reggie Miller will get a breather with 9.05 to go. He won't sit there too long, I no, guarantee you that, Mike. No. Immel against the double team. Foster kicks it back out to Richardson, and now Immel again. Remember, Immel's a good shooter. Richardson's a penetrator. Jackson is guarded by Reed. Jackson, not really an offensive threat. I think it's why Reed's on him, don't you? Right, exactly, to keep him out of getting that fifth. There's the trap on a wing. Haley couldn't get a tip on go. Big rebound of Wolf. I really, I'm impressed with Joe Wolf. He's a solid player. Kenny Smith shows that speed. That's Kenny Smith, the Rolls Royce All-American, taking the ball to the goal with authority. That's the superstar that he's definitely capable of being. 15 points for Kenny Smith, and it's a 71-62 ball game. They got a shutdown defensively right now, Mike. They really got to come up with the turnover. And Reggie Miller will be back in just a second. He didn't keep him out too long. Bad pass. There's the turnover, and now they got to convert off the turnover. Throughout its history, North Carolina has been famous for streaks. Ranzino Smith won't go. Big rebound by Jackson. Jackson, a horse on the glass. Doesn't possess a lot of good offensive skills. There's the three-point bomb. And Immel had Foster wide open underneath. Couldn't find him. What hustle to get it back, though. And what a play by Richardson to keep it. The key play was the hustle of Immel. What a tremendous job in going after that ball, coming off that long rebound. And UCLA, with 7.40 to go, wants to talk about it. They'll use a timeout. So we've got a timeout at Pauley Pavilion with UCLA leading North Carolina 71-62. You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986, featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson, right here on ESPN Classic. 7.40 left to go. How about those for license? <laughs> huh? I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I'm looking over at North Carolina. I see the Carolina blue and white. And I'm so impressed with the one thing I love about Dean Smith's program. They do it the right way, just like in Notre Dame and Indiana where I'm heading tomorrow. You know, you could say what you want about Bigger Phelps and Bob Knight, and you look at Dean's program, but they really emphasize the student athlete. Their players are more than just guys that put on a uniform. They make it in life. And to me, we have to have more of that kind of emphasis in college athletics. Couldn't agree with you more. You talk about North Carolina, all you talk about is class. And I'll tell you what, they know how to go on the road, too. They come to play at UCLA, they stay at the Beverly Hilt. That's class Not all the way bad. with a capital C. They force the turnover. Here comes Kenny Smith. Three-pointer. Reed tried to keep it alive, and Immel threw it away. He thought he had Reggie Miller breaking deep. Carolina's forced three turnovers in the last three possessions, but they have not been able to convert. Ranzino Smith. They got to dump it inside to JR.
Ranzino left alone, and they're letting him take the shots, and Ranzino Smith got the roll that time. 71-64, the first two points for Ranzino Smith. Right now, UCLA will probably go with a special play and want to get Reggie Miller isolated. And there, Hunter went for the steal and almost got it. You're right, they were going for Miller. Curtis Hunter is a very key player to this team. They need his quickness and his athletic ability. Who Richardson heading to be a star. He'll be one of the great point guards in the history of UCLA. He has six, and the lead is back to nine with 6.37 to go. Sonny Hill up in Philadelphia told me one day how super this kid is, and Sonny hit it right on target. He's a legitimate great one. Kenny Smith down the lane, a lot of contact, no whistle, and no basket, more importantly. Notice how they center the ball. Oh, I tell you, he knows what to do with the ball, Mr. Richardson. Basket is overruled, and an offensive foul will be called against UCLA as Ranzino Smith stood in there and paid the price. Dean Smith, what can you say? The guy's an absolute superstar with a capital S. Here's Wilson coming back in the ballgame as Jackson will go out. You know, when you define in Webster, coach, you define it Dean Smith with all capital letters. He's really proved himself. Montel Hatcher comes back in. Emma will go out. Both benches shuffling personnel to suit the situation, which is 619 left and a nine-point lead. Remember, Hatcher is a very streaky shooter, good athlete, but he's capable of hitting that three-point play. Wolf guarded by Wilson, who has four fouls. J.R. Reed is in there for North Carolina, who has four fouls. Ranzino Smith, he's a straight shooter. The reason he's open right now is because of the presence on the floor of J.R. Reed. They're playing down inside on Reed, and they're really giving him that jump shot on the wing. They're making sure neither Reed nor Joe Wolf will hurt them from inside. You've got to give up something. Hunter's trying to match up. See, he leaves in the double team, leaves Miller, rotates up. Miller with great awareness. As soon as Hunter left him, Mike, he released right to the basket and gets the, the easy layup. And what a nice job by Foster, who's done that three three or four times. Here's Wolf with that jump hook, rimmed out on him, but Reed tipped it in. Reed says, hey, if my guys are not gonna get me the ball inside, there's only one way to get it. Go to the offensive boards and get it back up. Hobson will come back in and Hunter will go out for North Carolina. It is a seven point game again. It's 75 to 68, 529 left. Boy, this has been a beauty. It's really great for the early season to have teams like this pit. It's better than those cream puffs that a lot of those schools play like yeah. Clemson and you know my man Ellis down here playing on Winthrop's and <laughs> I don't want to say that again. I've been saying that too often. But this is basketball. Go out and play the best like Denny Crum does. Miller oh, double pump. pump didn't go but Thompson will get the foul. Oh, when Reggie's got the basketball, better not turn your head. you got to really deny him the ball. Once he gets the ball, you're at his mercy. It's like giving him a gun. you got to really deny him and force him away. And See, once he has the ball here, now watch this. He'll lean in. He's a good offensive player. Gives the head fake. Now he's going to lean. He's going to drop step. See him take the front step. He, he kept his pivot foot down. Popson thought the ball was gone. He goes on a line. I'll tell you one thing. He's usually automatic. Six out of eight tonight. Only the third player in UCLA history to score more than 700 points in a season. The Pac-10 will be interesting this year as he comes up short there. Arizona's certainly got an outstanding team with Lute Olsen. And you watch Arizona State. They could be one of your real mystique teams in America. Eight-point ball game right here. Wolf, alley-oop. Oh, nice play on a back screen. They catch UCLA with a back screen. The toughest screen to defend in basketball is a blind back screen. Popson has 14. Miller looks like he wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Reverses. Oh, what a shot. Holy cow. Hey, that's an NBA small forward superstar move. I mean, he twisted and turned. He shaked and he was baking. Reed had it screened off and lost the ball inside. The recovery by Trevor Wilson. Almost every possession down the floor now. They're going to their All-American. He's clapping his hands. He says, get me the ball and we'll finish this off. Backdoor pass. There he is. Showtime. Oh, shot. he misses the layup. What a great move by Ray. He went down hard, Dick. He's up now. Three-pointer won't go. Wolf with a rebound. Leaned into the follow. It won't go. Pops and tipped it in. Boy, there's a lot of contact out there right now, and no whistles are stopping play. <laughs> Hobson really aggressive again. Gets the open lane. Good offensive rebound. 78-72. The margin six. We're under four minutes. The last four possessions, it's been the Reggie, William, Reggie Miller show. There's so many Reggies playing basketball. 
And that's a great play by Trevor Wilson. This kid's going to get a lot of playing time. Well, Kenny Smith back the other way. He's for real, Mike. That kid Trevor Wilson is for real. He's really impressed me tonight. So is Foster. He's not a media high school All-American. Reed tied up. Yes, sir. Jack Ball and the possession clock will give it to UCLA. UCLA doing a good job defensively. This crowd has given them a sixth man. They're really out here rocking and rolling like the old times. See, usually it's like a theater here. It's like Pavarotti in concert. <laughs> right now it's like Hart in here. 3.35 left, an eight-point game. You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986 featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson right here on ESPN Classic. Dick Vitale, I know this is your seventh or eighth game in the young basketball season, but this is my first, and I am loving college basketball. Well, this is the kind of environment you like to be at. I know tomorrow Convocation Center in South Bend, Indiana is certainly going to be rocking and rolling. I have to go up there against Notre Dame in Indiana, and this is what it's about. You know, you want to see the great teams play each other, the different conferences, the fans love it, and, and I just think too many coaches are worried about losing in December, and they load up with a lot of patsies rather than go out and play the good teams that get tougher down in, in March. But then again, I can feel for a coach. When I was coaching, I wanted to play all the cupcakes to get those <laughs> wins, baby. Load up on the little sisters of the poor, huh? Well, Mike, a lot depends on your security as a coach and sure. how much your university supports you. You look what happened now in Texas, the coach getting fired in football. Yeah. Guys had a class program in terms of doing a great job, and that's our system. I'd like to see more presidents reward coaches for kids graduating by giving. I want to see them call a coach that hasn't won and say, here's a five-year contract, coach. You're doing a great job. Your kids are Boy Scouts, and they're graduating. Don't hold your breath on that one. Miller clobbered as he goes to the lane, and the foul's going to be on Scott Williams, the freshman. I am amazed with the driving ability of Reggie Miller. His driving ability tonight has totally impressed me. Look at the way he takes the ball right at the defenders with tremendous quickness. Now watch his quickness in that first step. He's got that explosive first step. He's very wiry. I mean, they're knocking him and banging him. You know what impresses me? The coaching move by Walt Hazard to have his players go exclusively, basically, to Miller down the stretch. Really, we've only seen him shoot one rainbow tonight. Seven out of ten from the line for Miller. They got eight out of 11. He's got 29 points. That's what he had in the opener against Santa Clara. They get 29 just about every night, I think. You combine that kind of driving ability with his range as a shooter, and you're looking at a potential 50-point night tonight. I think before it's all done and said, he could be right up there in the top three or four in a nation and score him. He will. And I think uh, at this scoring pace, he will leave UCLA second only to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, then Lou Alcindor in scoring. He was a fair player, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He did a fair job in the post. He still is. The best what of is all he, 30, time. Uh, seven now? Something like that? I believe he's the greatest center in the history of basketball. We could talk about Russell and his shot blocking ability and Chamberlain. But when you look at consistency and doing it in every phase of the game and passing the ball, scoring in a low post, I think tough he's to the argue best. With. Speaking of arguing, what is uh, Walt Hazard and the officials talking about now? Something with the clock, I really believe. And now they're going to get uh, no, a substitution. Palmer. I guess they wanted to make sure Palmer is coming in for the right player. Remember, in college basketball, on a 45-second clock, you reset it as soon as it leaves the hand of the shooter. In the NBA, it must draw on. It must make contact up on that rim. 82-72 with 3.17 to go. North Carolina needs to make the most of each possession it gets now. they got to get a jump shot for Lebo, a three-point play for Lebo or for Kenny Smith. They're playing three guards now, Lebo, Kenny Smith, and Ranzino. There's Ranzino, runs See? around a screen, moves outside that three-point range and buried it. Here comes the three-point. Yep. Arsenal, 82-75. You almost hate to see this in college basketball. Teams play tremendous basketball like Western Kentucky did against Nevada Vegas, and then all of a sudden it's bombs away, and you take away a performance that's a clinic performance. 
Pooh Richardson gets it out to Wilson. I don't blame the coaches. It's part of the rules you utilize. Sure. Oh, this guy, he's such a show with the ball. What a great pass that was. Man, what a shot by Wilson. This kid's going to be a great player. Yeah, great with a capital G. He's yep. got the great athletic ability. Ranzino, another three-pointer. Didn't get the roll on this one. And a nice rebound to Foster is going to help him on, too. And here comes the mockery of the game. Every possession will be a three-point attempt. This kid, Richardson, is really in control of the offense. Look at the way he handles that ball. Unstoppable. Miller. He's unstoppable one-on-one. -on -one. He'll only beat himself. Rebound to Reed, but he threw it away. If UCLA maintains this lead, they're up by nine. This could be the biggest win, certainly, that Walt Hazard has ever had. He needs this big win. As we talked about, this program needs a big lifting hand. The fans have not been coming out to watch UCLA play. Wilson almost backcourt. Boy, Pooh Richardson almost stepped on that line. Now they go to the double team to Miller. Cross court, Foster, great pass inside to Wilson. What great execution. The team concept moved the basketball. That's normally North Carolina style. It's going to be a three point attempt again right here. You're exactly right. It does look like North Carolina. Kenny Smith, three pointer. Good. And then North Carolina will call timeout. 86 to 78 is our score with 120 to go. Certainly one of the masters at using the clock and using timeouts late in the game. That's another reason I don't like the three-point play. Just allowing teams to come down and shoot, shoot, shoot almost in every possession. Timeout on the court. Some of the band and the student body here at UCLA with a minute 20 to go. They are working Dick Vitale on a monumental upset, leading 86-78 over number one, North Carolina. Well, Dean Smith told me a couple of weeks ago, he said, hey, we're overrated, Dick. Everybody that has us, number one, we got some young new kids. We lost some key players, and somebody had to be number one. Yeah, that's Certainly right. they're not number one in, the, in, in terms of North Carolina in the past when we talked about the great Worthies and Perkins and Jordan. But this team will win 25 games. Oh, yeah. I still believe they're the best in the ACC. They're going to have a great, great year, but it proves again that magical word parity. I have to disagree with you, and I've loved working with you. I don't call it a monumental upset, not a Paulie Pavilion, and not with a Reggie Miller and a Pooh Richardson and the kind of players Hazard has. And, and with plus, these freshmen. And plus Carolina traveling from out of Hawaii and yep. coming here is not an easy thing to no, do. No, it certainly is not. We're down to 107. I don't know. I think right for right now, I'll stick with monumental upset. <laughs> you like that word, monumental upset. I huh? guess I must. Uh, I'll tell you, it's been fun working with you. You have a good time working with Tim Brando tomorrow night at Notre Dame, too. It should be exciting. Really should be an exciting night. I hope uh, David Rivers is healthy and, and can play the game he's oh, capable of. What a great story he is. And Steve Alford, certainly one of the great shooters in college basketball. And watching, D, uh, watching a guy like Bob Knight hook up with Digger Phelps is always exciting. Foster goes to the line his first trip. He has not been to the free throw line as a college basketball player. Both freshmen really didn't play a great deal against Santa Clara in that opening. In fact, Peter Dallas, the AD, told us it was one of the poorest performances he ever watched by UCLA in that game against Santa Clara. But tonight, they have been outstanding. Saved it for tonight, didn't they? Lebo drives in, gives it off to Wolf. They blew the layup. Wolf got it back, put it up with the left hand. Wolf go again. And it's just not going to fall for North Carolina. And Dean Smith just turned around and slapped one hand against the other. He knows that may have done it. Frustration City right now. I'll tell you, the adjectives will be rolling by Mr. Hazard now. They'll be flowing all over. And he has every right to be proud. His team was absolutely superb here tonight, Mike. And that's the job that will get it done for Walt Hazard. Not talking about it, that's but right. getting it done between 94 by 50 and doing it by posting a win over a legitimate super team. Now watch Dean Smith as Joe Wolf was putting up that last shot. No, that was the reaction to the is. foul. Tell you what, I know you have to catch a plane, and they're going to take you to the airport in a hurry. But you better go over there and say hi to Mr. Hazard. I was talking to him before the game. We were laughing and all. Plus, he he was great to me this summer. He took my daughters around uh, UCLA. We came to visit this summer and had a great, great time. He's not a kind of guy to get upset, and I just tease him. I said, well, all I'm doing is being honest. I said, you got to respect that. Look at the results of the big Pac-10. But you know what? I'll sing his praises now. They you deserve it. Reggie Miller makes it a 10-point game, 40 seconds left. Three-pointer, Lebo. 
from Carolina. We'll use another timeout. It's three-point shooting time, boring time, not what college basketball was made to be. Do you hear me, Ed Stites, the rules committee leader? All right, let me ask you about that. Now, if you don't want the three-point rule, you're going to have to get rid of the shot clock, aren't you? Well, no. Here, I want a three-point rule, Frank. I like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm working with so many guys. <laughs> Mike, I'll tell you, I like the three-point rule. Don't get me wrong. All right, what do we change? I'd like to see it pushed back a little further. Okay. If you push it back at least one foot, you now reduce the percentages that we have today, and you wouldn't see guys coming down shooting on an every attempt. Yes, the cl shot clock goes hand in hand with the three-point play. You don't see it like a gimmick like this in the NBA. I don't say put it that it's too far. far though. It's too far, but put it back 22 feet. I mean, this is absolutely a gimme. I mean, these are jump shooters, and they're coming down on every play. You have guys now, I seen it the other day, three on one in a fast break, and they're down by 15. They're saying, heck, running a good execution of a fast break, pull up and shoot the three-point right. attempt, and that's not healthy for the game. Bien. You're watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and the UCLA Bruins from 1986, featuring Kenny Smith, J.R. Reed, Reggie Miller, and Pooh Richardson, right here on ESPN Classic. It's been UCLA all the way. North Carolina has not led in this ball game since they were up 4-2. Here's the, the full court pressure, and they beat the press. They spread the court against the trap. Popson goes for the ball, fouls Palmer. It'll be a one and one, and Popson has fouled out of the ball game. I'd like to see this change with too, Mike. With 16 points. I'd like to see the last four minutes of a game. I definitely would like to see in the last four minutes that a team has the option to shoot a one and one or take the ball out of bounds. I told that today to Rudy Marski of USA Today. He called about the I don't the like that one. Well, Rudy called. They wanted to know about some of the rule changes. He's been talking to Ed Stites, and I gave him my feelings. I think a team should have the option to take the ball out of bounds. You'll reduce all the fouling that takes place that makes a game an eternity and makes guys like me put us in trouble and get into the airport. <laughs> Hobson is out of the ball game with 16 points. J.R. Reed will come back in. Hobson played an excellent game. You know, he, he's begun working, uh, I guess, for a while now with karate to improve his quickness. He did play an excellent game, and J.R. Reed's going to have big numbers at North Carolina. Once he settles into their offensive flow and gets a feel for it, you're going to see big, big numbers scored by the big guy inside. This one's not over yet. 88-81, 24 seconds left. Kenny Smith, three-pointer, won't go. Reggie Miller with a rebound. That could have cut it to four points. It's academic right now. Here's the finishing touch. Ooh, I thought he was going to finish it up with a slam dunk. Tell you what, Wilson is a smart, smart player, and he got the ball to Foster. All he wanted to do was let the clock run. I really like Wilson. Just a great performance by Trevor Wilson, Foster, and really the catalyst of it all, Boo Richardson. And don't forget the All-American, the prolific scoring ability of Reggie Miller. Foster will go to the line. They said they didn't want to put too much pressure on this young man and play him a lot early, but he has really done the job. You know who's number one right now in America? I'll be number one after this. Nevada, Las Vegas, and you know what? They deserve it. And looking yeah. at their schedule, they may go all the way undefeated because the PCAA will not be a threat, but they have a game with Auburn, which will be a tough ball game at Auburn. Yeah, it will. And I think, I may be wrong, and I have to check their schedule, they may be playing Oklahoma at Oklahoma. Three-pointer is short. Another one by Ranzino Smith. It will count. You would think they won the national championship. Look at the celebration, Mike. Paulie UCLA Pavilion rocking and rolling. Off a monumental, I'll use that word again, a monumental upset, 89-84 to over North Carolina. And all the credit has got to go to Walt Hazard and his kids. They did a great, great job. Our final score here at Pauley Pavilion, the home of past champions and maybe future, UCLA 89, North Carolina 84. Reggie Miller scored 21 of his 32 points in the second half as UCLA upset North Carolina. Kenny Smith led the Tar Heels with 18 points and 7 assists, and Dave Popson scored 16. The Bruins went on to win the inaugural Pac-10 tournament that year and defeated Central Michigan in the NCAA tournament before being upset by Wyoming as Penis Dembo scored 41 points in the victory for the Cowboys. Meanwhile, Carolina received a number one seed in the NCAAs but fell to Syracuse. Kenny Smith, however, was a first-team All-American selection. That wraps up the Bruins and Tar Heels from 1986. I'm Mike Gleason, and thanks for watching ESPN Classic. They do.